Yo guys, welcome back. I'm David. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make your own firmware for your DMA card. First, you need to open the software to view the serial number of the PCI device. And Telescan, it can check your device manager. And when you buy the firmware, you have to download it. Let your firmware seller to check your device number. This is a debugging tool for PCIe that allows you to view the parameters of your computer's network card devices, sound card devices, and GPU devices. First open the AMD Vivado. We then found the open source debugging tool for DMA in GitHub, and it's worth noting that this tool is completely free, and the developer encourages users to make their own firmware. Sorry for my views, I use Chinese languages, but you guys just follow tutorials guide. You will get your firmware working perfectly. In this video, I'm going to make a unique firmware of my own. Of course, if you have any idiotic questions after watching this video that you don't understand, you can join our Discord server and we'll be happy to help. I've downloaded the files from GitHub, so now let's start setting them up. Don't forget to download it too. If you don't know how to download files from GitHub, I suggest you turn off this video. These are the initial source code files for the DMA. The bottom file is the initial speed measurement file for the DMA firmware, and you need to open it with a specific programming tool, the software I mentioned at the beginning. Please don't forget to copy the path to this folder. We need to access it. Then open Vivado. In the following command input line, paste the path to the file you copied. Please don't forget to include the two prefix commands CD before copying. Now that we are in the folder path, we need to copy the exact path of the project file to run it. Then just copy its file name this time. Notice the command I typed above. If you can't see it clearly, look at the big screen. Once the inputs are done, your project is created successfully, and we need to make changes in the firmware so that it becomes your firmware. Now that the project has been created, now we find the file name with the PCIe suffix A7, open it and edit it. Please don't find it hard. You have to go through this if you want to make a firmware that is just for you. After opening it, please find line 209. Please change the two numbers 0 to 1 in line 209 and 210. I have already changed it before. Just change 0 to the 1. In line 215, you can see the DSN logo marked here, which is your device ID. We need to open the device acquisition tool, enter your own hardware ID, and change it. I'll use my network card as an example here. Now we open the Telescan to check my network card ID. The network card should be on everyone's computer, so just open Telescan and find it, then follow me. Okay, in here, you would to see your network card ID, DSN, aka device serial number. Please combine the two lines of letters entered in your firmware project. This is your hardware ID. Enter your hardware ID here. When you're done typing, check the orange button on the left in my screen and double click to run it. Once it opens, we need to change our IP core. Please click on IDS. You can change it here. As before, we still need to see the hardware ID and enter it. The vendor ID, just your vendor ID. So that's why so many firmware don't support in some viewers' computers because they're not one by one firmware. That's why the firmware can't working on your PC because vendor ID, not right. In Telescan here, you can see your network card's vendor ID. Just remember it and copy. Please follow the ID of Telescan in your computer or it will not work again. Haha. <laughs> we don't point fingers at other distributors for their products because we can't stop them from scamming us out of money. We can only do a good job of making our own products and letting more people know how firmware are made. Now that our device hardware IDs have all been adapted successfully, 
I now want to make it a little more perfect, so I'm going to modify my memory space. You just need to modify it according to your network card memory space information. If the firmware you received doesn't match your device, check out my video on using Telescan to see if your device's network card memory configuration is the same. Once you're done making changes, click OK to save your configuration. Here also same, click the blue button. Once it's done working, type this string of code into the command line to lock down your IP core. You can copy this code in my video profile, or you can join the Discord server to learn how to make firmware together. Okay, now that our IP core is locked, it's safe, and it will work on the firmware without being overwritten by some anti-software. Now double-click on the core file in the yellow button, and you can see the hardware ID we changed, as well as some of the bypass parameters. The purple letters are all hardware ID parameters that we have modified, so you can check them again. Here are your mouse pointer parameters. Yes, that's right. The firmware can affect whether or not your mouse will work correctly. Now you can generate the firmware file. Please click on generate in the lower left corner to generate it. If you like my videos, please follow my channel and leave your comments. David, thanks so much. Now open our source file path. You can see an extra folder here. This is your latest generated firmware. Of course, it only belongs to you. Haha, <laughs> enjoy it. You can see the bin and bit. It's your firmware. Some DMA card support bit file. Some DMA card support bin file. Just save it. That's your firmware one by one.